Hey everyone, welcome back to TLN. For Canadians these days, health is their number one concern, but these same Canadians are hesitant to seek medical help due to the pandemic. Today we're talking to Dr. Lai, a cardiologist at Trillium Health Partners. He'll be talking to us about how the cardiology unit has adapted and, of course, encouraging Canadians to continue to seek help. Thank you for having me here. I'm so happy to be speaking to the TLN community today. Absolutely. We're so excited to, to really get some insight because I think on the news, a lot of us have heard a lot about COVID-19, but there's been a lack of focus on a lot of other health issues that a lot of Canadians do have. So first off, just talk to us in the cardiology unit. How has the day-to-day -day changed since all of this started? Yeah, you know, it's interesting, Camila. I would say that as a cardiologist, the core of what I do in terms of, you know, interacting with patients and their families, um, diagnosing, managing, treating cardiovascular disease hasn't had a, you know, profound change for the pandemic. I still do all of that work. But of course, what has changed dramatically is all of the features around providing that care. So where I provide care, how I provide care. So for example, now, instead of going into my office to see patients, I would say that 95% or more of the care that I'm delivering is through virtual care models. So either through you know, video conferencing like you and I are doing now or over the phone. So that's been a real shift. And then, you know, in terms of the work in the hospital, that also has changed quite dramatically in terms of how we're delivering care, you know, and that's obviously because we have to always be aware we're in the hospital, you know, we may interact with patients who do have COVID-19. So we always have to have that, you know, in the back of our minds. And we have to deliver care in a way that's going to be safe, you know, keep ourselves safe, other healthcare workers safe, other patients. And on a personal level, you know, keep our families safe. You know, this is, you know, the first time many of us have experienced working where, you know, there's fear of, you know, what we can bring home to our families. So now when I work at the hospital, I have a totally separate entrance and exit than the rest of my family from our house. I wear scrubs only. Um, you know, I have a whole protocol in place to make sure that my, pa uh, my patients and my family are safe through this period. So that's been a real shift in the day to day. But you know, gratifyingly, I have to say my work as a cardiologist in terms of the core um, tenets of what I do has been able to continue, you know, fairly unchanged through this whole pandemic period. And, and do you find that a lot of your patients are afraid to go into the clinic or, or to go and get a checkup? Because I think that's obviously a big concern for a lot of Canadians. Yeah, for sure, Camila. You know, when I've been speaking to patients over the past weeks, you know, they've expressed that to me, of course. And I think that's a natural response to all of the information that's out there. Um, but, you know, uh, what I say to my patients at this point is, you know, we are really well into our experience with COVID now. You know, we're nine, 10 weeks into the experience. And so we really have uh, very robust protocols in place at this point in terms of delivering care safely, you know, be it through our offices or through the hospital. So I really tell patients, please don't hesitate to seek care if you need it. You know, we will make sure that we are providing care in the uh, safest way manner uh, possible and so they you know should seek care if they feel that they need it and when it comes to the actual pandemic when you started hearing about it did you anticipate that it was really going to affect us at such a global scale you know i would say that those of us in the medical community have known for some time that you know because of how interconnected the world is nowadays because of how common you know international trade and international travel is that infectious diseases like COVID-19 could spread across the globe rapidly you know I think we appreciated that and we knew when we heard of COVID that you know we it would come to Canada and to Toronto but I think what none of us really could have anticipated was just how profoundly the effects of the virus have been on every aspect of all of our everyday lives, right? The need for physical distancing has led to, you know, our kids not being at school, to everyday activities which are normally so simple, like going out for groceries or seeing friends or family, you know, that's had significant limitations. So, you know, I don't think any of us would have anticipated exactly what life with COVID was going to look like until we experienced it just along with the rest of the world. And coming back to the cardiology unit, I mean, we did talk about the, the priority on the news, but have you felt a priority in resources? Like, have you felt at, at any point a lack of support or a lack of resources when it comes to actually helping your patients? 
Yeah, I know, you know, that in the news, all of the focus, of course, and all we're hearing about these days is COVID-19. But, you know, I certainly would assure you and the community that cardiac care has been ongoing, you know, unimpeded through this time. As a medical community, of course, we had to work hand in hand um, together to make sure that the healthcare system was ready in case we did have a large influx of patients with COVID-19. So, you know, the healthcare program um, has worked hard to look at resource management to shift, you know, timing of elective uh, procedures and testing. But really, you know, acute cardiac care has been able to continue unimpeded. Um, you know, for example, our STEMI program, which is our program where we take patients who are having heart attacks directly to the cath lab, um, that's continued on a 24-7 basis, unimpeded this whole time. We've been able to continue, you know, emergent and urgent cardiac surgeries and make sure that patients aren't, you know, haven't had to wait for that. So we have had the resources to continue all of that acute care. Um, and then, you know, I would say that part of that has been the support that we've had from the community as well. Our ability to care has been so enhanced by our community partners. We've had so many people reach out to provide assistance from supplying PPE to, you know, retooling industry in some circumstances to produce PPE or to produce hand sanitizers, even, you know, simple things like coming to drop off food. You know, so working with our community partners, we really have felt supported and gratified by all of the support that we're receiving. And because of that, we've been able to continue, you know, a high level of, of care. And for all the patients back home, there's a lot of viewers that obviously, unfortunately, do have cardiac issues or they might find themselves in a situation where they need help. Do you have any advice or any recommendations for them when it comes to whether they should go to urgent care or an emergency room or who they should get in touch with? when it comes to cardiac issues? Yeah, I mean, thanks for asking that, Camille. I think that's a really important question and something that I really wanna highlight, you know, to the community that, you know, we as healthcare uh, workers and the healthcare system is, you know, stands ready to serve the community. You know, um, if patients are having any cardiac concerns or, you know, any other health concerns, they should feel comfortable um, and supported to reach out to their healthcare provider. And then, you know, if they're having symptoms that they feel they need emergency care for, they should please not hesitate at all to seek out the care that they need, you know, be that through calling 911 or coming to the emergency department. As I said, we really have our systems in place now to ensure that we're gonna care for patients with the highest degree of safety possible through the pandemic. Amazing, Dr. Lai, thank you so much for joining us for all of this important information. And of course, thank you for all the work that you and all of your colleagues are doing for the community right now. Thank you so much, Camila, and thank you again for having me. It's been a pleasure.